yell, yell, that's kind of one. But if somebody's under the influence of drugs or alcohol, that's a different animal altogether. Unless you've been a drug addict or an alcohol abuser, you're not gonna understand what I'm talking about. Because somebody who's under the influence of drugs and alcohol sees the world different, understands commands, understands things different. Their, their perception of reality is distorted. So, if you decide to intervene, and it's a situation that's pretty extreme, there is aggression involved, you don't want to get hurt, or get somebody else hurt, or let the, vi let, let the aggressor hurt themselves. I have seen, unfortunately, a lot of times in Mexico, I'll use that as an example, uh, where I, there was one father, he was gonna, unfortunately, hit the wife, and he just went crazy and then ended up committing suicide. You gotta be careful how you do things, but you can't go into a situation that could explode alone. We're not superheroes, things hurt, we're human beings. Nobody's really trained in these things, no matter how many courses you take. If I'm a great swimmer and I'm an Olympic champion, cover me in blood and throw me in the ocean with sharks and see how well I can swim. You know what I mean? You gotta move your ass and that's it. Same thing with domestic violence. You gotta be real careful. So, I'm starting to wake up now. <laughs> Don't worry, Mom, I won't say bad words. <laughs> well, those of you who know, who know my mom, <laughs> I can show you the frying pan here. <laughs> over here. I should have taken this course when I was younger. <laughs> Make the call now, that's pretty obvious. Um, you can't wait on things. Well, let it calm down and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Everything works out. Maybe it'll get better in an hour. Come and take a walk with me. No, make the call right there and then. It ain't gonna stop. <laughs> Somebody hits you, they're gonna hit you again and again and again and again. Make the call. You make a decision to intervene, you gotta go all the way, you gotta follow through. Because sometimes, well, 99.9999% of the time, the victim is gonna say, it's okay, I don't want trouble. If you don't stand up for that person right there and then, that person's gonna end up dead. There's no other way to put it. You gotta take a stand and you gotta follow through. I'm gonna kick your ass tomorrow, well, kick it tomorrow, but I'm doing something right now to save this person's life. Get it? Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See? Good stuff. <laughs> okay, this is important. This is a life skill, and it's not that hard to learn if you just try it, apply it. You need to learn how to listen. When you listen, you empower the victim to trust you enough that they can admit that they're in a situation that need, they need emergency assistance right now. If you start giving opinions and answering when someone's reaching out to you, they're gonna be quiet and they're gonna hide behind that fear that you're not gonna believe them. You have to listen and you have to let that person know that as strange as the situation sounds, you believe them and that you're gonna support them because if you don't, any victim's gonna run and hide forever. That's another one that kind of makes sense, right? Very important, because just you giving two minutes of your time to listen to somebody is gonna save their life. I bet you thought I was just a pretty face, right? I bet you didn't think I was that intelligent. Okay. Be on standby. This is a, a, a thing that a lot of people have uh, trouble doing because you're gonna say, why do I wanna get involved? Listen, if you make the commitment and you let somebody know, hey, you can count on me, you can't just say it and not mean it. You gotta come through because you never know when violence is gonna strike again. You could say, hey, thank you for telling me. I'm aware of the situation. You can come to me at any time. You gotta mean it. Three o'clock in the morning, you get a phone call and you're looking at the number and you don't answer. Just because you were lazy, that person could be dead in the morning. You gotta come through. If you tell somebody they can trust you, you gotta mean it. That's another one that's pretty simple. But it's a lot that not a lot of people wanna do. Where are, where are accountable? 
all of them accountable. What? Accountable. Our boards are accountable. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. Awesome. And nothing could be truer, brother. I'm almost getting to the end, don't worry. I'm just translating on the go. From Spanish to Ojibwe to English. <laughs> you need to have an intervention plan. If you go in as an individual or you go in as a group, as a team, you got to have a plan. Who is designated to diffuse the situation while somebody is getting the victim out of harm's way while the other person is calling for medical attention or the law enforcement? you got to go in with a plan. You don't make that plan up at the moment. Have a plan in place in the community. Look, if this happens, you got your role, I got mine, and I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to send my mom to break up a fight while I call the police. I'll probably do both. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You've got to be organized. Without that, it ain't going to work. Because you could go in and push, push, shove, shove. You get a shove, somebody slaps me in the face, I get mad, and it turns into a bigger fight. Don't want you to mess my hair. <laughs> Man, everybody's still asleep, but just nobody has the same screen. <laughs> Check in regularly. Along the same lines. You make that commitment, you let somebody there know that you're okay, okay, but that's not enough. You gotta call. You gotta have a code word. A code word is essential. We do it in martial arts all the time, or because I do a lot of scenario-based training when I, when I teach police and uh, crisis groups and crisis intervention groups, and um, I'm a SWAT instructor for the LAPD, and uh, I'm also a security specialist. So when we do these scenario trainings, like I play the, I play the robber or the, or the prisoner or the bad guy, you know, and I put on a special suit so they can hit me and I won't get hurt. It's an example. But when they're gonna about to break my neck and they got, it's like, okay, red, 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 let me go, because you're gonna hurt me, right? Same thing, if you're reaching out and you promise somebody, you can call me and this is where you can go, we have our team in place, we need to have a code word. Is everything okay is a little obvious because the person causing the damage could be saying, you know, give that look and say, I told you not to tell anybody I was hitting you. They could, it could be, did the Maple Leafs win finally? <laughs> it's an example. No. You know what I mean? And that lets the person know who's in control of the intervention that it's an emergency situation and move. It's, another, it's kind of common sense, like I said, but it does make sense and it works, I'm telling you. Uh, two more. Check in regularly. Last one. Document, document, and document the situation. Write it down. Get it in writing. Take pictures. Ask questions. Have a record. Because if something happens on January 5th at 3.14 p.m., and in May, you say, well, why are you telling me this is going on for months? Well, yeah, this is, this is what happened. And the wit you, know, you got to have witnesses. you got to have people, like you said, brother, being accountable. Don't just say you're going to do it. Do it. Put it in writing. That's the only way to go. With the Guardian Angels, we're, we're helping in the community with certain events and, and safety. Now, I don't have a lot of friends on the police force, for example, because they're like, why are you doing this and the people like you better than us? Well, because we do our job. Hopefully there's no police here in here. <laughs> but I write everything down because they might say, well, you went out and hit that kid. Well, no, I didn't. Not only do I have five witnesses and photographs and a video, but at this time, on, if the event happened on Sunday, there was a woman on Saturday night. She was assaulted. I went to her house. I talked to her. We got it all in writing. I'm bringing that document to the police on Monday, signed by her, and I'm bringing two copies. We have an official seal. If I seal that document, can't be doctored. And I'm making the police sign a receipt saying that I brought it at this time and I'm going with a witness. In case something happens and the police say, well, you didn't notify, well, yes, I did. Do your job. So that's kind of what I see could help us as a group, as a community, as a family. Because whether you're Ukrainian, Irish, English, like myself, 
Aboriginal, under the stars, we are all one family, we're brothers and sisters. So unless we start to focus and function as a community and as a family, there will not be any changes, period. And uh, I hope that you learned something from me today. Um, obviously, I'm available and accessible through my mom, or just come up to me and start talking. If you want to ask questions or you want more information and more help, hands down, from my heart, I will give you all I can. And it's a lot, because I believe in you, because I love you, because we, we're family. So thank you very much for letting me come.